Who remembers temporary undo? Who remembers temporary undo? It actually came out, I think, back in, maybe it's even back as far as Oracle 9, maybe Oracle 11, I can't remember, but it's been around for a long, long time. Here is the theory behind temporary undo. You had a database that is read-only, and the most common example of that is an active data guard database. You've got a database, it's being kept in recovery mode in real time, it's open read-only, that's a fantastic resource for being able to do, for example, reporting off it. But as the, as the name suggests, it's read-only, you can't actually do DML on it. Even an insert like that says, no, you can't do it. For Active Data Guard, what we're saying is you can only run queries. Now that's fine if we're running our own ad hoc queries, but unfortunately a lot of reporting tools, the Tableaus, the Cognoses, the, our own BI products, etc., they mainly do reporting, but they occasionally need to store some metadata. And that was a bit of a drama because you couldn't create metadata. The way we solved that for Active Data Guard in the past was he said, you can have this thing called temporary undo, which redirects your undo into the temporary table space. That eases the restrictions on a read-only database enough to let you create global temporary tables and then use global temporary tables to actually store that metadata. So you can see that I've created a global temporary table called report staging, I've inserted some data into it, and that would let me, for example, then use it in joins and things like that. The amount of people that actually took advantage of that was virtually nil. And the reason is third-party tools, your Tableaus, your Cognoses, etc., generally don't like using functionality which is vendor-specific. So even though we gave this solution to take more advantage of Active Data Guard, none of the vendors really embraced it because they were pretty much, well, we don't want to be looking at global temporary tables and stuff like that. We just want to use normal tables. So it's a cool idea, but people didn't use it, therefore less benefit for your Active Data Guard. And in 19C, we've tried to address that. We had this thing called DML redirect. What happens now is we will actually take a read-only standby that is open for read-only, and we will let you do DML against it. A database like something like Tableau, Cognos, BI, etc., even a normal user, we can say, look, go ahead, connect to that standby database and run DML. Now you might be thinking, well, how's this gonna be possible? How do we actually allow data changes against a read-only database? It's a contradiction in terms. What we do is we intercept the DML as it's applied to the standby. We redirect it to the primary. If you're running Active Data Guard and read-only mode, anytime you make a change to the primary, it gets flushed to the redo logs, those redo logs get sent over to the standby, so what we do is we simply intercept the DML, take a little bit longer to send that DML to the primary. We then let the reader logs flow back to the standby. When they arrive, we tell the person, yep, your DML is finished on the standby. They never knew it took the long road to the primary. So this is a way now of allowing small amounts of DML, that the kind of metadata operations that reporting tools want to do to actually be allowed against the standby, that the reporting tool will never know that we actually intercepted it and sent it via the primary.